Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. In this video, I'll describe the scoop chuck that I made to hollow the bowls on these scoops. It's actually probably more versatile than just scoops to hold almost anything that is difficult to hold. Maybe it could be called the flying handle chuck. And anyway, this is a fusion of several ideas. As I considered this, I thought about the coal jaws that we made a while back and I thought about the egg chuck that we made thinking maybe I can drill a hole in the side to allow the handle to protrude and make this a flying handle chuck. I didn't get very far with that one. In the end this is what I came up with. It mounts onto a standard chuck body with jaws. The jaws are made out of plywood and a, another wood element. The plywood is Baltic birch drilled to match the holes in the jaws. The other wood can be anything that is fairly easily tooled and firm. You want the side grain on these. Now to show how easy these things are to make, I actually made a mistake in making the first jaws because when they were all ready I bored out the center to adapt it to my scoop. I made a mistake. They're a little bit too big and this is on the minimum side of the chuck. So I had to make another set. It took less than an hour plus glue time. So let's make our scoop chuck. I'm starting with one half inch Baltic birch plywood cut about eight inches square. I've marked diagonals and halves for layout. Next, I'm placing jaws from my scroll chuck on the plywood, aligning the edges to the half lines and bolt holes to the diagonals. Then I've marked the center of each hole. You'll see later that this was not a precise mark, but was good enough for this project. I'll use these marks to drill one quarter inch holes for the bolts. Remember to purchase bolts long enough to compensate for the additional thickness of the plywood over the standard jaws. Then countersink each hole deep enough that the bolt head does not protrude beyond the surface of the plywood. It also helps to draw a perimeter line. Then saw apart the four quadrants. I also dripped thin CA glue in and around the bolt holes to stabilize the plywood a little bit. Then I cut four pieces of two inch thick wood for my jaws with ends mitered similar to a picture frame. I also marked and drilled excess holes for the outer bolt hole. I would not trust the jaws with only one bolt per jaw. Then glued each block to the plywood face. Allow them to harden overnight. How do I know this? A little trimming on the bandsaw makes the job easier later. Then the new jaws can be bolted to the chuck body and mounted to the lathe. Now I can pretend this is a turning project of its own, rounding off the jaws so they will not accidentally hit my hands. I also trimmed the plywood plate just a little bit. Since the bowl is about 2 inches, I'm drilling a center relief hole just under that size. Just do not drill into the bolt heads attaching the jaws to the chuck body. At this point, I really can do whatever I want to these jaws to customize them to a project. In this case, I removed two jaws, leaving the other two to hold the scoop. In hollowing the bowl, I hollowed the jaws a little bit. Not a problem with wood jaws, but try that with metal jaws. If the jaws don't work for a project, I'll cut them off, true the base, and glue on new ones. They only took about an hour, plus glue dry time, to make. With that little time invested, I can make several sizes, but probably will not until I have a project needing them. That's all for this week's video. Please like this video, and if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns.